Hello, this is RVer Frank with Kathy and Coco. Today we are going south on Interstate 15, headed to Tokerville to check out a place that is on the market. It may not work for our needs, but looked interesting enough to drive by and check out this scenic drive and learn a little more about this place. To think about it was like a, um, like a movie. It's a very unique community. The last place you'd expect. Our freeway exit 27 off Interstate 15 is the northern gateway to Zion National Park. Here we can stretch out across the sun-baked sandstone terrace, flanked by a trio of pristine waterfalls in this secluded oasis on the outskirts of Tokerville. Find this divine swimming hole, a gushing arrangement of cascades known as Tokerville Falls, at the end of a lonely road on the western fringe of Zion. Like all of the best things in the Southwest, you've got to travel a ways to get to them. Off the regular tourist trail, this summertime oasis is an ideal refuge for those whose souls crave solitude. Tokerville Falls is best found by truck, SUV, or ATV. From Tokerville, Utah, one of Zion's national parks, Gateway Towns. This haven is at the end of a six-mile scenic drive on a barren bumpy dirt road. I should note, this dirt road is maintained fairly well, but is best suited for trucks and SUVs. Make sure your spare is functioning as the road tends to get rough and you might need it. The views are spectacular on the drive. The waterfalls are great to look at and cool off. The area is clean and great for families and you won't be sorry you made the trip. This wilderness area is in an isolated part of the vast, uninhabited desert of the southwestern Utah.
Tokerville is located about 30 miles south of Cedar City in a wide valley flanking Ash Creek and at the base of a mountain capped with black lava rock. With an elevation of about 3,400 feet, it has a climate conducive to the growth of pomegranates, figs, peaches, and grapes. Pure cold water pulses from springs a mile above town to furnish an ample supply of culinary and irrigation water. The history of this place is Brigham Young sent skilled men to settle in different locations. A group was sent in the spring of 1853 down from the Iron County along the Black Ridge and then along the stream we now call Ash Creek. About six families came and settled in 1858. When they arrived, they found a group of Indians calling themselves the Paiute or Toquit or Tokirat Indians living along the creek and cultivating a small piece of ground. Chief Toker lived there in a tent of leaves formed over a framework of cane and willows. The new settlers considered him an enlightened Indian, friendly and with clean habits. The name Tokerville was given to the new settlement, taken from the Indian word Toker, meaning black. With the abundance of black rock on the hill to the east of the new town, and in the field surrounding the town, the name was appropriate. The first homes in Tokerville were made of logs filled in with mud. Ash Creek was a small ditch one could step over, but the floods kept washing the dirt away and opening up the new springs. The first dozen families found the water so scarce they got discouraged and moved to Canara. As the water increased, they took up land on the west side of the stream. At first, cotton was discouraged as they could not exchange it for breadstuff. In 1859, there were 19 families at Tokerville who were prospering remarkably well and at this time were very busy putting in wheat and other crops and making fences and other improvements. One of these improvements was the erection of their first meeting house. It was of adobe and about 16 by 20 feet and also used for school purposes. The town became known for its fruits and nuts and once had a thriving cotton gin. The busy village came to be likened to an oasis in the Arabian desert as the traveler emerged from the harsh desert to a cultivated island of green growing things. Okay, to the left is the property I want to drive by. It is located in a prestigious Tokerville neighborhood with walk path and park, one story, four bedroom, three bath. I just hope there is a good place to build an RV barn.
Very nice house and beautiful grounds, but not the best place to keep the RV. Well, we will continue to head on south and continue our search. One fruit Tokerville became famous for was excellent figs, with people traveling from everywhere to buy the crop. One story tells of a buyer coming for figs with nothing but his hat to carry them. When he asked the price for a hat full from the woman selling them, she asked if 50 cents would be all right. From that incident came the standard Tokerville rate of 50 cents for a hat of figs. During the late 1800s, Utah had a thriving liquor industry. LDS Church President Brigham Young had no qualms about producing or selling alcohol. He built a distillery at the mouth of Parley's Canyon and owned Salt Lake City's first saloon. In 1861, Young had a winery established in Tokerville and received frequent shipments of 40-gallon barrels of port for medicinal and family use. The Mormon-owned mercantile ZCMI sold beer, wine, and liquor, while the Desert News regularly advertised home brewing equipment to its readers, as well as alcohol such as Kentucky Bourbon and Old Tom Gin. Mormons also produced their own brand of whiskey called Valley Tan. This paralyzing intoxicant was reputed to have quite a punch and was known as leopard sweat, liquid strychnine, and tarantula juice. Wow! Valley Tan was served in Salt Lake's numerous downtown saloons, which were frequented by U.S. soldiers who came with Johnson's army in 1858. The troops spurred such a trade in alcohol that Salt Lake's Main Street soon earned the nickname Whiskey Street. Utah was also home to 15 commercial breweries, several of which were owned by faithful members of the Mormon Church. For example, Brigham Young's bodyguard, Orrin Porter Rockwell, owned the Hot Springs Brewery at the point of the mountain. Beer was consumed by many Mormon immigrants from Europe, as well as Germans, Italians, and Irishmen who came to work in the Utah mines. Liquor was big business. In 1863, the Salt Lake City government reported more revenue from the liquor industry than all city taxes combined. By 1871, a liquor license in Salt Lake cost $750 per month as compared to $56 per year in Chicago. But profits were not enough to stem the tide of temperance sweeping the state. By the turn of the century, attitudes about alcohol were changing, and Utah prohibition was just around the corner. Look around and see the history still here in the town hall and many of the historic homes around town. Clippings from the Desert News, 1868, by Martin Slack. Peace dwells in the hearts of the people. Everyone busy, no loafers, no office seekers, no gambling saloons, no drunkards in our town. We all mind our own business. We're all helping to build Zion, the city of our God. 